Yes, people, we are back. Let's just, just kickstart the video here. But um, literally today, I'm going to be taking you guys through a full day of eating on a training day. So I'm currently consuming 2,000 calories. <laughs> yeah, it's quite low, isn't it? Uh, 225 carbs, 40 fats, and 200 protein. So I'm going to take you through my whole day exactly what I eat and yeah I hope you uh, you enjoy it so from the intro as you can tell I haven't eaten um, I've literally just come back from was it 11k 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 walk and it is eight o'clock so meal one will probably go down in the next half hour my first meal was actually what I consume on a rest day. So meal one was uh, four hex sausages, six mil olive oil, um, which rounds up to 25 grams of protein and 10 fats, no carbs. If you want to check that meal out, go to my free uh, meal ideas, no carb meal ideas. It's my last video that I've done, so I'm not going to bore you with that first one, but I'll show you, I'll show you once it's cooked, but meal one is a no carb meal. Meal one is about to go down. I'd like to, have no like basically the way that the diet is set up at the moment is most of the carbs is pre and post the reason for that of course is pre you want carbohydrates as an energy source to provide throughout your whole workout um, and then of course you've depleted glycogen stores which you need to replenish and you could you replenish them through carbohydrate sources so um you know most most of the carbs are loaded pre and post. I do like to have some carbs before bed just because sleep's not been the best. Um, when you do get to these last stages of, of dieting, sleep can be somewhat of an issue and it is for me so I like to have and leave you know some carbs before bed but let me stop waffling and let me dig into this first meal and then I'm going to go head, head upstairs into the office get some work done and then I'll probably join you for the pre the pre-meal, yeah. I'm training a bit earlier today because I trained early yesterday. I normally train about three o'clock. Yeah, and I, I normally train about three to four o'clock between that time. Yesterday I trained at 12. It's now 8.30. Trained at 12 yesterday and it was a very good session. I feel like I just had a lot, a lot more energy just because it's probably more early on within the day than rather than you know getting work done and then I, I just had a better session. I don't know what I'm talking about. I had a much better session, so I'm going to try that again, try that out again today. Um, I'm going to I'm doing pull today, so I'm going to take you through a few pull clips, and yeah, we'll um, we'll have a good session. Cool. So the time is oh, runs off. Ten o'clock. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cons basically not consume, but. I'm going to start prepping and cooking the pre-workout meal. So the pre-workout meal that I'm currently having, I absolutely love this meal. It's one of my favourite meals. Um, let me just get up the macros for this meal. So 45 protein, 10 fats and 75 grams of carbs. It's one of my highest meals. So like I mentioned before, post and pre are both 75 carbs to both, you know, they're, they're, they're two meals of the highest carb meals of the day. Um, so, what I'm having here is raw white potato, 365 grams, 115 grams of tuna. Uh, don't at me, tuna is absolutely oh, the way that I make my tuna. I, I, I just love it. Um, 40 grams of Philadelphia cheese, light, has to be the light one, and then 5 ml olive oil. So, I'm mean, gonna let me prep this pre and I will show you how it's done. So I've got the 365 grams of white potato, finely chopped them up, fry light, the garlic one, one calorie spray, I'll spray that all over the potatoes and then this all-purpose seasoning, now where is it from? Uh, from, from Lidl right? This all-purpose seasoning, shout out to Henry for this one. This is the secret touch, and I love to just wet all of this on there. Hands are washed. So before you at me, my hands are already washed. 
and then you smother that in. So whilst the potatoes are in the oven, I'm currently prepping the tuna. Yes, you can do two things at once if you didn't know. <laughs> but I wanted to speak in regards to these skiddy sauces. These have been an absolute godsend on this prep because they have got nothing in it basically and they taste pretty decent. I mean, I think they taste good because I haven't really had any other real flavours since like April, but <laughs> so to me, anything tastes good right now. Also this red, uh, Red Hot Frank smoked Chipotle as well. I'm currently basically, what I'm doing is I'm whacking this in the tuna, I'm whacking this in the tuna. And I've put some cucumber in there as well. And mm, flavours, that's all I've got to say, flavours. Look at that, just, just, you ever seen tuna so good? No, like if you are on a diet phase or you're going through like, like through a cutting phase or whatever, you want to actually be very cautious of what kind of sauces and you know condiments that you're using because you can actually rack up a lot, a, you know, a lot of calories than you actually think. Like mayonnaise and like normal ketchup, you squirting a little bit on there, thinking, "Oh, it's fine. It's not, it's not going to do nothing." It actually, you know, if you're consistently having that every single day, you're accumulating like probably like two, three hundred calories just through like a tablespoon of mayo. So and and obviously accumulative over the week you, you know that's increasing your calories and it might actually put you out of a deficit so you need to be very conscious of the fact of you know the, the sauces etc that you're using make sure you go for options like skinny sauces or you know, red hot frank sauce which has only got like 50 calories per the whole bottle so um yeah definitely look at the macros on your sauces so of course you have to get your greens in right so what i've done is the 40 grams of Philadelphia light, which is this stuff here. I've whacked it in. Of course, I've had this on the on boil whilst the, the potatoes are cooking. finished products the, the potatoes they don't look done but that's exactly how i like them they are they are nicely cooked inside i'm gonna top it off with some smoky barbecue of course and i'm gonna enjoy this meal so i'm gonna eat that pre chill for about an hour let it digest and then we are headed off to the gym right so it is now one o'clock after i'm eating i do normally go for a walk so my step was my step count was at like eleven thousand, right? Now it's at twelve thousand five hundred. So what I do is I just eat, go for a walk around the block just to help digest the food. Um, wait a couple hours and then I go train. Uh, what I've done is I've got my pre workout, and we today we're going with MV pre. Now MV pre is the goat. I've tried a lot of pre workouts. But there's nothing like MVP. It's just a constant buzz all the way through. There's no drop-offs in energy, um, and I don't, I, you know, I don't get a crash feeling after I've worked out as well, which is ideal for me because I come back and I do some work. So um, MVP. But I add Himalayan pink salt and also low salt into my pre-workout. So basically, Himalayan salt for sodium, and then your low salt, which is very high in potassium. And basically what you want to do is up, up regulate your, um, your electrolytes. So, you know, with sodium and potassium, because what that does is it gives you an energy boost and it gives you a good contraction, good, good pumps um, through the muscle as well. So, you know, something as little as just adding potassium and sodium into your pre-workout will go a very long way. But yeah, let's head over to Crayford now. <laughs>
session if you guys want me to like do like a breakdown on the pool sessions or any of my sessions just let me know in the comments and I can basically break down why I do specific exercises you know first or second etc and I can kind of break down the full workout but I'm hungry it's time for post-workout so having uh, this is 45 grams of protein zero fats and 75 grams of carbs we've got cream of rice highly digestible carb sauce so 80 grams of cream of rice 250 grams of Faye, 20 grams of Perform Whey, and then 52 grams of strawberries. So what I like to do is, I like to cook up the cream of rice. I'll show you a little tip on how to create it so it comes out a lot of volume, even though it's 80 grams. Um, 250 grams of Faye, instead of using like a Perform or a, a protein source to hit the, the protein levels, go for something like Faye. It's a lot of volume, you get I think it's 10 grams of protein per 100 gram and there's zero fats in there as well so and it's hardly any carbs makes sense using something like fire yogurt to create some more volume um, but what I do like to do is add some perform to the fire to give it a bit more taste and then we've got 52 grams of strawberries just to sprinkle on top but let's get down to cooking so I'm using the cream of rice from JP, the peanut butter cup, which is quite nice. I like this. It, it blends quite well, what I find with the JP one. Doesn't look like a lot, right? Literally doesn't look like anything at all. But what the secret trick is, xanthan gum. You want to add a tablespoon of xanthan gum to the cream of rice and then basically load as much water as you want in there. And I'll show you once it's done. And it just gives it more volume if you add this xanthan gum. Um, but yeah, let me get some water in there now. The, you need one of these bad boys here to mix up the cream of rice. Otherwise, it's just going to come out all chunky and plunky, whatever the hell you want to call it. But <laughs> um, You want to stir at the same time as the water goes in. People are like, oh, are you using tap water? Oh, I don't care. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. But yeah, you can pretty much add as much water as you want. For me, that is perfect. And you just want to stir. Keep on stirring, stirring until there's no like lumpy bits in there. And then let this sit. Because I don't, you have to keep an eye on this when you're cooking it. So in the meantime, I'm just going to prepare the, the fire yogurt. And then I'll keep an eye on this and let this cook after. Right, so I went for, like I said, 250 grams of fire yogurt. And I chose the Kinder Bueno, the white chocolate hazelnut, which literally tastes like Kinder Bueno. Whack that into the fire yogurt, give that a little mix, keep mixing that in, and then that is gonna be a, a layer on top of the cream of rice. So with the cream of rice, like I said, you just need to make sure that you're watching it at all times. 
because otherwise it can get very messy and it gets hard and I don't like that hard consistency so I'll put it on for two minutes two minutes and then I'll just watch it literally watch, stir like, watch it, take it out, stir it, put it back in two minutes, just keep repeating that process so I've got the consistency that I like now that is what you call a post workout I'm going to enjoy this and I'll probably catch you at meal four. Meal number four is acquired. We've got a cinnamon donut whey cake topped off with some mint intense lint dark chocolate as the fat sauce. Now, I've actually perfected the whey cakes. If you want me to do a separate video on how to create these bad boys, let me know. Uh, how, how should you let me know? Just let me know in the comments. Or just like the, the, the video so I know that you want you want to see this recipe. I don't know. I don't know. Just do something. Um, but yeah, the, what's the time? The time is currently seven o'clock. This is when I normally start to unwind, get ready to bed. I like leaving like my last two meals quite sweet because I get the sweet cravings more towards like the the evening. So, we have here uh, 40 grams of strawberry, 54 grams of perform whey, 24 grams of dark chocolate, and 150 almond milk to make the whey cake. And that brings us to 40 protein, 10 fats, and 25 carbs. And in my last meal, oh, I'll show you what my last meal is, but it's 7 o'clock now. I'll probably have my last meal at 8.30. Normally, you would let like 2 to 3 hours for food to digest, but... If anyone's dieted down and they've got to, to like the latter end of the stage of the diet, they know that sleep is an issue. So if, if I can have two you know, relatively high carb meals towards the end of the evening, which are going to help me sleep, then I'm going to do that. I, I'm, I'm definitely going to do it. But yeah, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to unwind, watch some YouTube videos or whatnot, and then probably catch you about 8.30, 9 o'clock maybe, for the last meal of the day. Meal five, we got 62 grams of oats, strawberries, peanut butter, some maple syrup on there, skinny of course, and we've got 300 grams of fire yogurt. So I'll use 91 grams of strawberries, and this meal concludes to 62 grams of oats, 300 grams of fire yogurt, 10 grams of peanut butter, 91 grams of strawberry, 45 protein, 10 fats, and 50 carbs. I'm having to film the outro <clears throat> in my office because the kitchen's a bit hectic at this time. But thumbnail? That's the thumbnail there. This is going down. I've kind of made my oats different today. I've tried to create a lot of volume on them. So I added a lot of water in there, nuked it about two minutes and then took it out, nuked it again, mixed it, left it in the fridge and all this jazzy stuff. But that is the full day of eating. I'm going to leave the macros on the screen, but I'll let you know what they are anyway. So the macros for the day are 200 grams of protein, 40 fats, 225 grams of carbs, which concludes to 2000 calories per day. Who said you can't make prep enjoyable? 